been. I, I think I might have worked out. What, 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 it's, he's, he's walking backwards, it's all filmed backwards, but he's singing forward. Now, the only way I can work out they've done it, without CGI in it and cheating with the lips, is that he had to learn, learn it, backwards, it backwards and did it sort of like bit by bit. Did he do that? He was on Zoe's show like about a week ago or oh, something and so he, he sang it backwards. So he learned phrases and they filmed yeah, that. Yeah. But he didn't learn the whole song, did he? They must have, he couldn't possibly have learned the whole song. He must have like stopped it and... <sighs> I don't know. I it's a great video, though. They always do a mm. good video. No, it's very good. Very good indeed. So it was, uh, yeah, The Scientist on XFM 1049. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkerton. I had a bit of good news this morning. Go Rick. on. Um, I was on the tube coming down, and, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but, um, I was at Green Park, and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated, I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. There's, th there's a lot of pop, uh, pickpockets around Green Park. No, 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 no. My wallet was still there. Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent. But, <laughs> the, but, 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 the, but the wallet was still there, so how, <laughs> what do you think of them apples? Eh? So what did you just pinch your I don't, I can't confirm it at this stage, uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round, there By was- a woman. There was a woman behind me. Right. She was fairly old. She was, I think, she's probably in her mid thirties. Right. Um, kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But uh, she knows where I am. And, um, so I don't know how to proceed, really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could Just do to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky you, guy's arse, no, please we get in could, touch. you could probably get in, uh, a contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CC exactly thing, CCTV cameras, yeah. And then they could probably zoom in and you know sort of identifying sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some up. Then I could hire a private eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying. I mean, I'm just saying maybe the you know maybe things are looking up. Things it's getting are towards Christmas. The worm has turned. Hey? I don't. I, I mean, you know, it's a little uh, sexy story to get the show <laughs> it going. Is, it is but, great. So what do you make of that, Carl? We're looking at you're quite damning. Um. What's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite a, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to sort of reach up and and have a pinch. Hmm. Do you know well, what you mean? think she, she was the dwarf? With, she, she did it with her teeth. He didn't say she was a dwarf. No, no. But Steve's taller than you know his arse. Yeah, but his arse isn't six foot nine, is it? Well, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F four foot. What? Four foot off off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three. She'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's arse. He is very tall, but yeah. I don't know what your point is there, Carl. You're just see, you're just trying to you're, you know you're just uh, yeah, I don't I know think maybe he's a little bit jealous. Just a little bit uh, of jealousy. Well, do you know what happened to me on the way in? Go on. A homeless person called me a dickhead. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> do you know him? Is right, that why? He's a local. He's like the local big no well. big issue fella. Oh yeah, yeah. And he know he knows me. He sees me walking up and down the oh, street. Oh, that's how he knew you, right? So, um, so I normally have a have a bit of a chat with him in that. And I walk past him, and um, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, I can I can be a little bit cheeky with him because I've been cheeky with him in the past with stuff. Um, you pinched his arse. No, no, <laughs> just you know, saying stuff like, "God, you're always there. I mean, you got home to go to and." Oh. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, no, just he, breaking the ice, just breaking the ice. Go no, on. He yeah. knows, and he laughed at that, right? Yeah, last time, yeah, so I thought yeah. I can be a bit cheeky, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, do you, want a, do you want a big issue? I said, nah. He said, come on, I've got loads of them, right? So I, I sort of said, oh, w when I was a kid, and I used to do a free paper around the free papers one, I said, just put them in the bin and go home. <laughs> right? And he went, yeah, but how am I going to get any money doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> you see, yeah. I can see his point. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. is homeless and having to sell newspapers to get 50p or a quid or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes I treat him, right? And today I didn't have any money. I had a takeaway last night and I normally give them a quid and I felt bad not being able to do that because I didn't have any money on me last right, night. Right, I couldn't look him in the eye. Did you night. explain this to the homeless person, the traumas of the takeaway <laughs> without the tip? <laughs> Did you explain that, you know, y you've had it hard as well. Yeah. I go, look, you don't I had food delivered to my warm flat. Yeah. It was Yeah, you don't know what that's like. You don't know what the trauma is because you can't have food delivered to your flat because you haven't got one. So please don't look at me like that. You should have said. But most people ignore him. At least I gave him a bit of acknowledgement and sort yeah, of- Yeah, took the, took the mick. 
Yeah. I didn't think I was, I just was being yeah. friendly. Yeah. No, I know. You gotta be careful with the homeless, cause I, this is, I, this is true, and this is, I, you know when the clocks went, was it, the clocks went back recently? Yeah. So you got an extra hour in bed? Yeah. And, um, I was at cash point with a friend of mine, and there was a homeless person sat by the cash point, <laughs> and, um, was, you know, we would get some money out, and she said spare some change, and my friend's, oh, he's a bit awkward, he just trying to make conversation with her, he went, oh, clocks go back, extra hour in bed. Oh no. I gave her two quid, I felt so bad. <laughs> oh, he didn't God. do it intentionally, he didn't no, realise no. what he'd said. Just know, making just conversation. Bumbling. It's oh. tricky making conversation with the homeless, cause there's so many areas you ca- you've got to avoid. You know, know, what was on the telly. Yeah. You know. Although I get recognised by homeless people and they are, are they, I don't know where- Well you gotta remember that's very much your demographic, Rick. <laughs> yeah. You know, pe- people window. who watch TV through the window of Dixon's. Yeah, in Dixon's, yeah, there was a- the Ricky Gervais is on, yeah. pop the well, telly they, on. they can smell the alcohol on you, they think <laughs> you're one of them. <laughs> oh, I've had to cut down on that, I've all been really good with this training thing. The boxing. Uh, oh, oh, play a record and I'll tell you about that, I had my first week of training. I'm- I'm in trouble, I'm struggling. What do you wanna play? Oh, we've well, got a bit of, uh, have we? Stone Roses, classic. Feeder, come back around. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right. Uh huh. Yeah. So I, st- I had my first week of training for this um, charity boxing. Um, for those people who don't know, I'm, I'm fighting Grant Bovey, uh, Anthony Turner's husband. Um, it's, it sounds arbitrary, but it's actually because he's uh, at 41 and about my weight, a bit taller, I think. But uh, and we've never done it before. But um, no, it'd be it'd be fun mm-hmm. battling someone for charity. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but um, it, 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 it's and I can't believe my luck because I've you know I've been a fight fan for like 30 years and. Um, and they took me shopping, they bought me all the gear, and uh, the training's great. It's really hard, I mean, it's, uh, I imagine it'd be really hard, and it's probably slightly harder than I imagined. And the only bit I like, so the, 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 I, I, I don't like all the exercise and all the stuff you've got to do. I like the bits that look a bit like something I've seen in a Rocky film. Right, sure, You know, we sure. did that thing with the, uh, the string along the ring and I have to pop up and punch and that. Right. That was great. Right, nice. I, skipping's not bad, I'm trying to get good at that. I like that ball that you go... Yeah, yeah. Are you any good at that? Is that uh, I'm getting, getting good at it. Uh-huh. And, so, oh, and what's well. that teaching you, that particular thing? It's just uh, the rhythm, is it? Uh, it's, it's rhythm and, of course, your arms are up for that long so it... It, you've got to keep your guard up all the time. Yeah. So that teaches you to keep and your you arms were, up. And you were, uh, up at six this morning, you broke some raw eggs into a cup and then you <laughs> ran up the steps of the town hall, didn't you? I know. Well, with loads of people following me and I shouted, Bovey! <laughs> at exactly. the top. No, I'm not going mad, I'm not going mad. Just, sure. just, 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 you know, once every, you know, every other day. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm struggling now. I've, 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 I woke up today and I, it's like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. Just everything aches, so the muscles you haven't used. But, um, anyway, I had a meeting, uh, the first time with the, with the people, the programme makers, because they're following me for a month and everything, and Grant as well. Um, and they said, oh, um, uh, you'll need a sort of nickname, just for a laugh. And I went, oh, what's Grant using? And they said, oh, I think he's gonna use gorgeous Grant Beauvais or Grant. I went, oh, I don't know, um, oh, gosh, I better go, I better go against that. Um, what about, um, Ricky Gippo Gervais? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, like, like, yeah, so, uh, anyway, I had a frequent with Frank Maloney meeting the next day, and, uh, it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, you've got to do this nickname, and the bloke said, oh, I checked out that name, you can't call yourself Gippo. I went, well, of course I can't, <laughs> I was joking. He went, well, I said, well, it's racist, I was joking, I was making a joke about me, but, and he went, oh, I don't know. And then, uh, I went down to get the, um, buy all the gear from this shop. They'd have the dressing game made? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was picking all the stuff, I was going, oh look, that's like Naz War. Oh look, that's like Ali War in the... And I'm going, I'll have that, I'll have that, picking all the gear and everything. And, um, there was a couple of boxers down there, sort of like looking at me, thinking, who's that fat bloke taking yeah. up boxing at 40? And, uh, I said, oh, I wasn't it? And, uh, the bloke went, oh yeah, how are you doing? I went, oh yeah, so how long have you been in the game? He said, I've been boxing 20 years, so how many fights you had? He said, about 40. And I said, oh yeah, help me, I've got to think of a nickname. And I thought, I said, uh, I thought, uh, Ricky Balboa. Gervais, he went, right, I went, or Ricky Marciano Gervais. He looked at me and went, what about Ricky Martin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, dear. Absolutely justified. Yeah, I, I, I'm not respected yet in the boxing world. <laughs> no, sure. But, I mean. It's only a matter of time. Once well, they I see think they're gonna go see you fight, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna change. So, uh, that have you good. actually, have you actually punched anyone yet? Have you actually- Not any, no, no, I've punched, punched prison. I've punched pads and I've punched the, uh, the bag and I've sort of sparred and that. I know, you didn't get a chance to well, punch Well, someone. as I suspected, um, my, my punching power's alright, but my fitness is, I mean, it felt like I was smoking. Yeah. You know, but there's 
b you know, bits of lung that haven't been- had oxygen in them for twenty years. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And also because it's not only it's being filmed, but there's the other fighters there that are ridiculous. They're like machines, mm, right? Mm. And it's that thing I go- I can go, right, I can- I can come out on top but die in, now of a heart attack but never give up. Or yeah. I can sit down and go, I'm sorry, I'm- I yeah. feel ill. And I chose that one and of course they took the mitt. Well, of course. But absolutely. I mean, you know, soon. Uh, you know, as I said, I haven't got the respect yet of the boxing <laughs> fraternity, <laughs> but- uh, it's How long have you got them before- Four uh, weeks! Okay, so- yeah. and, and do they think that they can turn you around health-wise in that time? Uh, no, they're going to be realistic. coming out on a Zimmer no, they're gonna, they're the gonna, you know, they're, they're gonna teach me the ba basics and see how it goes, you know, right. but I mean, I'm, you know, And I'm each sure. round is four seconds, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two four-second <laughs> yeah, rounds. With a, with a yeah. two-hour break in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> a sit-down um, meal. So, uh, give the number, I want, I want serious suggestions of my fighting name. Nothing insulting, so what we can actually use. Well, let's give out the, the email, BBC. that's always the easiest. Yeah, Ricky exactly, Dodger yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number, Carl? Um, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. And it doesn't have to be in the middle, it could be at the beginning, like... Okay. <laughs> the Rage. Okay. Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. the Rage. Ricky the Tits. <laughs> 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 sure. Ricky the Man Rest <laughs> Player <Yeah>. Record. <laughs> Big it was a good day, yeah, Ice yeah. Cube. Yeah. Uh, talks to me about my life. Yeah, in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. A <laughs> no. couple of emails are already coming in. Russia, they're flooding in, Rick, yeah. inevitably, uh, as boxing name suggestions for you. This is one from Matt, I think. Uh, he's given a couple, actually. Ricky the Pudding Gervais. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ricky Big Mac Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th there's a theme here, Ricky Pasty Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> the Pasty, I quite like the Pasty. Here comes great, the Pasty. As <laughs> Carl said, he said, the thing is, if you have a really good nickname, it's embarrassing when you lose, whereas if you just call yourself yourself, it's not so embarrassing when you lose. Carl, this is doing that good for my <laughs> ego. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? If you have, like, Killer Gervais. Yeah, and then you end up, like, vomiting, yeah. choking on your own vomit upside down, down and hanging out the ring. What happens if you win? Do you have to... Whereas there goes the pasty being stretchered off <laughs> in the first two minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not such a problem. <laughs> there he is being lightly basted <laughs> yeah. uh, and chucked down a mine. <laughs> what do you mean? What do I have to do? Say if you say if you beat Grant. Say yeah. say if that if that happened. Yeah, yeah right. Um, <laughs> what what happens next? What do you mean? What happens? Next? What do you think? Oh, this is a a contention fight for no, the no, big no. one. But do they? <laughs> they, 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 they yeah. Well, th then we make Ricky too. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know, <laughs> do you know if they're planning on making more money? Because it's for comic relief, isn't it? So what happens on the night? No, it's, it's, it's no, it's for a charity. Of our comic choice. relief would make sense. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Whatever, right? Yeah, it was what last it? time. I think it was last time. Is it sport we're... relief? It's not sport. It was last time. Oh, right. Yeah, but this is. I think this is a program where. The... And, and how do we? Sorry, how does this? How do you make money for charity from this? Do we? Do we pay to? So sort of for how many punches to the head you're going to take? Or no, no. I just how think long you're going to last? I assume the BBC donate. Money or someone or a sponsor or whatever. So I don't know. Just right. donate because it's actually a program. This is more about a program with a, I think I see, a, I see. a charity angle. So uh, yeah. So as if if you get like killed, there's more money and food to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but no. I mean, the thing is, what's the next step? Because if they go like right, yeah, well done, you've won. Thank you very much. Well, Carl, what do you expect? That, that, that it's winner stays on? <laughs> yeah. Like in a fair, <laughs> where I go out there and I'd let people right, punch me in on the- Right, Manning. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then my twin gets up. Yeah. What, what do, what, it's just a- it's a program. He's it's not like, gonna turn it's, pro. It's like faking it. Yeah, but what's the point if it's not gonna go anywhere? Well, look- a what, a sorry, him fighting Grant Bovey in a ring is not entertainment enough. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter with you, Carl? Grant's gonna get his face pummeled in, that's gonna be no, hilarious. But, right, when I did boxing at the youth club. Once, right. when he did boxing, he fought once, he fought a little weak kid, cause it was his first day, battered him, next week it was someone else's turn and he got battered and he left. <laughs> yeah, I said, right, I've had enough. But there was-, there was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There, there was a ladder there that I had to work, right, and I decided after the sort of the, the first step, I thought, it's not for me this. Mm. Yeah. But, if you win, it's all kind of like, right, well... Yeah, the world's you your oyster. But it's a program. It's just a one-off program, isn't it? It's it's like, it is like you got to treat it like faking it. Yeah, but faking it, right, that little gay fella who ended up being a doorman, he's actually doing that as a proper job now or something, he loved it so much. <laughs> Do you seriously think I have any intentions of getting into the fight game and leaving <laughs> entertainment behind? Well, what's the point then? <laughs> <laughs> what what do you mean? What's the point in what's what's the point in watching television? It's entertainment. Or educational. 
I, I watch it to sort of soak in. Well, this is educational. I'm learning a lot. I'm actually learning a lot, and it's I can't believe my luck. I've got professionals telling me, you know, hopefully how to lose weight and punch hard. That's just fun. It's like like having golf lessons. Right. But say, I mean, here's an example. Go it's on. A, it's a nice way to plug it. We've got Rockbusters coming up in about ten minutes or something, right? <laughs> Now, Look forward to that. <laughs> people, yeah. people email in, and they don't just do it for fun. They do it because they know they've got some good prizes lined up. Right. So they're doing it because it gets them something. Yeah. My my prize is that I've learned something in life. I've gone through an experience, and hopefully I'll come out in some way better if I don't <laughs> get mashed. That's it. That's uh, the prize. That's why we do anything, isn't it? I think this is si this is an example of you, Carl. Is that you give up too easy? Yeah. You, know, and you, you suck up the box and you gave that up straight away. You think there's no point in anything? I did. I did Crusaders for a. I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's, What's that? Crusaders? Well, it was my mate, right? He uh, <laughs> it was it, it was religious. Uh huh. And I, I'm not really. Um, but no, I mean you believe in ghosts though and shadows pushing people off bikes. But go on. But it's the same time. I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was going to tell me dad. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Stephen and Jeffin. So he said if you come. <laughs> <laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, I love that what kid that, yeah, he hasn't quite got, got, uh, got the idea of the protection game. <laughs> There's nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right, so, uh, so I went to church with him and that, and then the next week he said, I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with the tennis ball in the pews, right? I don't think we've heard that, but I don't think we could possibly <laughs> right. go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Well, no. No, we, come, come on. on. We'll it. come back that's, to that. That's, that's, you okay. had a tennis ball and some pubes. No. <laughs> no, in the pubes. pubes. In the pubes, pubes right. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing. It's a bit boring. <laughs> um, Sorry. And so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades. <laughs> No, the it's called, What's it's the, called crusade? the Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh -huh. right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Brilliant. Right. So I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. They had Sabutio, <laughs> uh, played table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, oh, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember God <laughs> gave you yeah. all this. Well, yeah. it's sort of, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games, you can play uh, table tennis and, that, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk with your friends. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's all right. I think you'd right. be happy in a Young Offenders Institute. <laughs> 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 you get to clean uh, the toilets there But don't well. forget, Carl, I think God invented Nintendo too. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that was all right. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. And my mate said, if you go for four weeks, four, like, weeks in a row without missing a day, Yeah. Uh, you get a free badge. You know, and like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like <laughs> yeah. all this sort of being stuck in stuff. Do you know right. what I mean? That's yeah. Yeah, 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 y
so I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because I used to avoid hanging around the house in case- What sort yeah. of reign of terror <laughs> is this? is incredible. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, so I thought, right. It's like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, great, they forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on in sort of normal life now. Yeah. And I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday. Uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> so that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. Oh. Right? It was like three of us in the back. So, I said- <laughs> That record? So. Next time, was it came, a joke? next time he came round to pick us up, I said, look, really enjoyed it and that. I said, but ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again because it scared me a bit. And right. I said, all right then, I didn't have to go again. That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah. He almost killed you in a car crash. That's a parable. Thank, thank God no one was hurt. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I remember that-, that Your life moves in incredible ways. Yeah. Rather like God. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. So they're, pro go. they're probably round there now, aren't they? Going, is he coming tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> what we got? Well, are we talking about the prizes next? Well, let's oh, talk about the prizes. We've got the, yeah, we've got the big game rock busters coming your way soon, Rick. I know you're excited about that. And like, is there more educating Ricky this week? Have you got that planned? There is. We are struggling on that feature a bit now because I feel like we, we've covered a lot of topics. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I know about hairy Chinese kids yeah. and deaf people that hit their head and can hear again. Sure. So I don't think there's lots more to learn <laughs> in life. <laughs> And the amazing Carl Pilkington. Right, prizes. Yes, them. Rockbusters. Yeah. It's uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's gonna get ditched, Rick. Rumours <laughs> <laughs> there that Carl Pilkington, the creator and mastermind behind it, has always <laughs> grown tired of it. <laughs> it's often the way. You heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that. We've sure, played uh, sure. I Wanna Be Adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now then, really, isn't it? Second hand, yeah. yeah. 50 years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you there's some great stuff on here. Oh, opens, on. Rick, with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One, of the, not, one of the big, biggest uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that in enough already. You're followed then by, uh, John Lennon's Imagine. Candle in the Wind, Elton John. You've got, uh, all, all on sorts one of CD, Stephen. Well, it's- uh, These are some of the greatest uh, they, rock minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Go on. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> <laughs> That's on there. Uh, we've got, uh, let me see- Culture That is pretty impressive though, because they are real big classic number ones as opposed to, you know, the, 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 the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on, uh, this is not available in the shops and it's, you know, the second Second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM because inclu it includes uh, Robbie Williams' Angels, yeah. uh, Atomic Kittens, Hole Again, Spice sure. Girls' Wannabe, Connie Minogue's uh, Can't Get You Out of Head, and I think it closes, well it almost closes with Steps Tragedy. That's the penultimate track. It ends though. Uh, any ideas? Yeah. It's a big, big hit single. But Did they know it's Christmas Band Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album, is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And signed by the man himself. The Big Beach Boutique, uh, DVD, Fat Boy Slim's, uh, concert on that Brighton Beach. And, uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. Three <laughs> hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch out for this. I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, That's but just look uh, forward to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. There's the crowd loving it. Here's me. I'm just waiting. This is where I, I put, I go <laughs> from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. Oh, this one of my own. I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got Praise You Ready on <laughs> Yeah, I just got, got that. That's slightly dusty. I just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is a uh, box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found while I was clearing up, Rick, because I know there's not a big movie this week. We normally give away a big movie. Oh. I was moving house this week and yeah. I found a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. But it um, no, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So, uh, <laughs> oh, great. I think it's I think it's on TV this week, Rick. So if you <laughs> miss it this coming Channel Friday, five? you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Bring Vietnam. it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that. There's wouldn't you? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the, for like the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't, I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny <laughs> and why things you do are good. Go on then. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing Rockbusters now, are we? 
Yeah, I thought, well, we've just... Oh, then we, we keep that going, then we got... Well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I mean, oh, it's, it's just, it's just, just the clues. It's, it's just that you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais right. at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're gonna get three clues, you've gotta get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was Atomic, atomic kitten, kitten, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, <laughs> um, that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And the initials there are <coughs> DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got it's some got a well similar nice phrasing. trenches. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what are the initials there, Carl? That person? DW. DW. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly because his little face and his his gestures. That's the second one. The initials being H V. Okay, the top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials all worn out. Right, H V. And the final one is the final clue. I was in Texas the other week. Right, I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> what's the, what's uh, the initials? That? W H for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W H. Incredible. <laughs> He's got it! Is it right. great? It's fantastic! It's okay, time to join the record. Time to join the record. You're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We've got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda Green oh. on VHS. And of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision starring Kurt Russell as well. <laughs> oh, God! Bob Dylan. Just Like a Woman on XFM 104.9. Couple more names, uh, boxing nicknames for you, Rick. I Go think this is from Josh. Uh, Ricky Blue Eyes, I quite like. Uh, and uh, he's also put Toad Rage. <laughs> 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 which, uh, which I quite like. Uh, I'll tell you, our number one fan has emailed again, I'm pleased to uh, announce. Who? Richard Anderson, Dickie Anderson. He was in touch Anders last week. Anders is back. Anders oh, he is back. loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in, what actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dickie. Thanks for uh, noticing. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's he's Because last week, you remember, Carl, he emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably he's done that. Yeah. And uh, he's just well, emailed in. Well, how many feet? Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's, he loves this he's show. A good, yeah. So, uh, thanks, uh, R.A. Thanks for listening. See you later. Missy <laughs> Elliot. Work it on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. Should I do a bit of that? Well, they're, 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 the clues are coming in f uh, furious. The yeah. answers, I should yeah. say. Yeah. 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 So go on in. Oh, this is what. Yeah, I Rockbusters is well underway, Carl. Don't worry, you've done yeah. your work there. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just going to tease us, aren't you, with three uh, headlines? If and I'm going to choose one, and then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's the way it works. And at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with <laughs> with with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last, he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Go um, on. So the three headlines for you to pick from. We've got um, first one. Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. Uh, yeah, well, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me right, here. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... <laughs> when? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Olden times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. We, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you find out these books, well, it just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time. It just sort of says, you know, 
a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, all right, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that, because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and he'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't <laughs> enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made, you know, there weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So there wasn't as many houses, right? right? So what you what you ended up getting is like uh, you know the rich people having a nice place to live, oh. and the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like uh, people would go round to the mate's house and say, "Look, I haven't got anywhere to live. It's a bit cold. Can you let me stay?" Right? Mm. So they'd go, uh, oh, "All right, then you can stay a couple of days," but they ended up staying for like weeks. Yeah. Right. So. To sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner, and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner like, a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat, and, uh, nice veg, yeah. gravy, and- This you happened know, every time, did it? <laughs> <works>. <laughs> it this is where the saying came <laughs> this from. This is what happened, Rick. This, this is, is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the book of vague <laughs> sayings and stuff. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, but yeah. the person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some like, sort of a cut off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh. Meaning. Right. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's rubbish. Um, okay, uh, absolute. <laughs> Carl, no, why no, no, does no. that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why, do, why, why do they always, in every situation when you want to get rid of a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so he They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. Hold on, are you giving me the cold shoulder? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like, I like to do it cryptically. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. Well, anyway, that, that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh my god, in the morning! Oh my god, in the morning, if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others, we'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, Brilliant. Uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> nice, looking forward okay. to that. Okay. <laughs> Nirvana, yeah. in their version of The Man Who Sold the World, of David Bowie tune. Yeah. Good. Good tune. Good tune. Taken good from that uh, new Nirvana compilation. I like that version, I like the David Bowie version. You can't decide, can you, Rick? You're torn. In fact, I like the Lulu version as well. Is there a Lulu version? Maybe we should play that one, wow. Rick. Yeah. Was this recorded, what, in the 70s? I think she recorded it about the same time right. as David Bowie. I, I, don't, I don't know if he released it as a single. I think it was just on a... Yeah, so, uh, off the album. Interesting. Carl, Carl, Carl is studying. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the Educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting, right? I was looking on the web... But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know. Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, You're always unspe unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in why to see if I'd confuse the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Go! You are... No, I did, I did, it, no I, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that, why is that... And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, but I put in why <laughs> to confuse the computer. The computer. <laughs> like, look, we were going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, but, yeah. Uh, Last week, uh, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week. Let's do a phone in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing, because they say, 
there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do that, don't we? No, that's, no, no, that? but it's rubbish. And people say there's a fine line between madness and genius, and yeah. you know it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius <laughs> and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's. His mum's milk. What are you talking- what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just- A title for the- the story- No, 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 it's what? just- it's just what would you do? Right. What I do you mean what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In- in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, the eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Look, Carl, what are you asking me? About this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, this yeah. eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk. Yeah. And it's saying, is this right? Should it? No, be it's not. On? But what? What? What, <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. 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 But but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right. You know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh, God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what? So what do you do? I don't know the laws. <laughs> No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, "Look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this." Look. I'd say, "What, what, what, what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me?" <laughs> I, I, right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and well, the I'm public? I'm just saying. Say, if you live next door to this woman, yeah, right. The kid's hungry, eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish and he goes, Alright, son. She whops one out <laughs> Um and he starts having his having his milk, right? <laughs> you live you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you me... why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And I'd go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> so and you think that would sort that out? No, because uh, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see- <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never- <laughs> ah! Oh! So what? Oh, <laughs> You know, the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all. No, I know that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rovers. <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God. You don't see it <laughs> no. no. Listen, no. So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You Forget think you're it. giving a lecture Forget at Oxford? It's, it's not coming anywhere. No, go know? on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying, right. you grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having- <laughs> It doesn't look right! So- Right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. Oh, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gets, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> and a damn curly whirly. Pilkington. So, other things you don't see, Carl? Got any other ones? Or you've obviously been thinking about this. Um, what confuses you? When you look out your window, what confuses you with the world? What, what do you walk around going, oh, that's a bit weird? I remember, um, when you were in, uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish, <laughs> which confused yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can- <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Well, anything. I mean, you could look out the window there and you'll see something and you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? 
Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just to uh, get uh, Carl's take on uh, the world's. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a second. Let's have another educating Ricky because well, I think you got sidetracked with your, your, your talk of. Well, just the other thing on things you don't see. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now, you don't never see them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too <laughs> obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest. So. Oh yeah, and the and the the lady with the head like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's yeah, not go yeah, through these again. It just raises that. too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> Yeah. Right then. So, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> bluffing. Um, and. Just bluffing. But it's, it's Who was a, the king then? I don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh -huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly. Mm. So, you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because it's like, I don't know, don't know why they're running out of space. But <laughs> okay. they haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should have just buried them, but, you know, there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> he doesn't need anyone else in the room <laughs> to have, to have a, a dialogue. With himself. Yeah, yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I've sorted it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, for some reason, they, um, they presumably, if, it, if it's going to be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's that. There you go. You've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because it was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, no, no. I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So yeah. you've got all these people who are like going around. And like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day, and you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yes. So you can imagine, like, just constant like being depressed. Mm. So and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh god, what are we <laughs> going to do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said let's let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. <laughs> so they said, uh, what we need to do is uh, have a big party. Mm, so mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yep. in a big pile, mm -hmm. and they're all diseased and that, so yep. they, set f they set fire to the bodies, mm -hmm. yep. and, they, and they said, let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by, and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have a drink and that, and have a chat, we'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So it was, it was, it was all the bones, bomb fire, it's, it's bone fire. Yeah, excellent. Yeah? yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's how it came about. Yeah, in the 1700s. Yeah, that was. No, nah, probably. Okay. I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably I, earlier. I probably reckon earlier. it was the plague. Mm, mm, I mm. reckon it came from. But uh, interesting stuff. Interesting. Yeah, stuff. So that, that's. Yeah. Uh, Did you celebrate bonfire night? Is that a big celebration for you? Nah, Do you like the fireworks? So I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. Even no. as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and lo yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think the adults tears. think the kids love it and yeah. they're and, they're, and if they just got together and said, should we go this year, they'd all go, no. Yeah, not, absolutely. Let's not go yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had <laughs> wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon as a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, <laughs> I'd pay to see. That's a fire <laughs> display I'd like to see. As it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. That's that excellent. Feeling, Carl? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. Let's <laughs> play the record. Oh god! <laughs> oh, right, what's this? Go on. What, tell them, go on, go on, just get on with it, because I just can't believe what you just said. What, what, what are we doing? Are we, uh, the final one? Yeah. 
Right, the last one. Like I said. No, no, no. Say, say the record. Yeah. Say the record you played. They, Go on. This is, uh, Free Association. Yeah, brilliant. I right. wish I would not. Yeah, and what did you just say to me just before this was ending? He just looked, he just looked over at me and went, are there any animals without a brain? No, but hang on a minute. No, 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 wait, wait. And I went, yeah, there's animals that are. He went, oh, I was gonna talk about this, but it's sad. There's a lad born without a brain, and he laughs a lot, and his hearing and his sight's okay. I'll go, well, that's impossible. You, you if, if he's without a brain, th all that is impossible. And he went, well, it was in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> no, it was in a book that somebody sent. Right. And I didn't want to bring it up, because it is a bit sad, really. That this, you know, young lad, there's a picture of him sat there with his mum, and, uh... What? Uh, Carl! Well, Carl! I, 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 it. It c it's impossible. Well, there must have been more to the story. He Carl. can't not have a brain. Hearing and sight is a concept within the brain. It's that's all it is, right? Yeah. The ears are yeah. just receptacles. They're just yeah. So, but, but that's why it was in this book. It was a book of mysteries. Carl, you know if you if you if you <laughs> Carl, if you're reading a book and you see a photo and you guess <laughs> at what you think the story might be, that doesn't make it true. That no, doesn't make I, it fair. I, I looked at it because I thought he looks like an happy lad. Sure. And, and I read about it and I thought that's weird. Like you've said, the fact that he hasn't got a brain but he can see and he can hear. No! Impossible! Uh, impossible. <laughs> okay. Go well, on. Well, I, I don't know who to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, we haven't done it for a while. White Van Man. I thought yeah, there's some back, interesting questions back. raised today and yeah. I think it might be nice to well, just them, uh, Carl I think we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know yeah, his know opinions on the world. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper um, asks a typical white van driver questions, uh, his opinions on the week's news, mm. and uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. Good. Now then, what do you make, uh, what do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the, uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. Now he's having a bit of good luck. Quite right. right. Next one. Are Next you one. concerned that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's Ooh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> right, right, well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I said, have you been in jail for four months? <laughs> yeah. yeah but sometimes but people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an point. angel of gold now. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you despair. To you, yeah. You despair. <laughs> yeah. Know, right? yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate and they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and they got onto the topic of one of the mates who they said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the t that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting yeah. away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having <laughs> out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, 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 you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't necessarily know the ins and outs of it, do they? He's, he's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like to get up to now. I mean, if my my um, girlfriend when she was about seven or eight, she was walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C U N. You are joking? No, she said, "Oh, because she thought it was a big." She said she thought it was a big furry animal. She sort of she was being nice, <laughs> and I'm like, "Where do you do that? Where do you do that?" Like, <laughs> just heard it at school, so they might you know they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell right. this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change, I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round- Do you think they're twat? Yeah. All right. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, 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 it's weird it. though, because- no, hang on, Some people look from Cornwall use that, like, saying twit, so- if people well, are listening, Cornwall. Do you know I what, think a twit is a pregnant goldfish. Well, 
Well, uh, I, I learned the, uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah. Um, twat. <laughs> <laughs> For those that aren't sure. <laughs> I, I learned this at school when I was like 10 or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah. I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly, yeah. apparently. So, you know, <laughs> Carl would be a that. twit. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home. Oh, you twit, you're a twit. And send it to my dad, you're a twit. You're, you know, I'm yeah. not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. <laughs> That's great! I couldn't believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid, do it. Yeah. And then he'd say to my mum, you, 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 pull over, pull over, you're you gonna bum it you. And then saying this, then I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I never brought it up with him. So we'll be driving. Thing, you know, he'll be, I go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible <laughs> word? But he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear that again. Always good to hear that. Swade. Animal nitrate. Carl was all flustered because there isn't a, a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions than sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm, I'm after so Steve's song for a lover. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why didn't you carry on with your, uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the scene. We'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover. you keep go it going. Go on then, right, okay. We've right. had, uh, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Yeah, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, though. Go on then. Yeah, we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just oh, do okay. educating Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week and I had much better things, like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest and for some reason it made him, uh, it, uh played havoc with his belly and- What? He, he followed through and he had to clean up. Shut himself. Using, yeah, using, um, using ice and snow. Why are you tell- why are you telling me that Brian Blessed- what, what- in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he- he- he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I'll give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he- he gave that a go. Yeah. Right, it played- What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's- he's, he's you know, he's Oh, good. so he's alright. Uh, me- me doing a boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself- Yeah, he did is, that. Is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. What's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, good. You been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've uh, probably right. cleared it up by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> it, it slip on it. I can't really bother got... telling you this one, cos- Come on! Just honest, do it, or do it now! Steve, how we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means! Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, Talk. right, right, listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people. Is that 1800s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> 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 we'll be the judge of that. The, th the, thing, that, <laughs> the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't, even, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Well, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> what was the that bonus for? Fight. And blind blessed shitting himself. What are you? What? No, don't you. No, tell me that now. You nearly made me swear. Then just I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this back, Carl. Or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Time's running out. Not that people years ago. When people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And to, and so you never forget the <laughs> time. Because if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. And See, that, so, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's... 
You, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope? Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all they have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight, we haven't even got time for a last track, we've got an ad break and we've got to give out- Okay, Christmas. give the answers then, this is right. ridiculous. So, Come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> right. That's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked. All yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV. Yeah. That's, uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying that I haven't heard it. And she went, she was, he was talking to her off air. And she went, uh, what is it? Uh, so and so, so them curtains. She went, all oh, right. He said, you know the thing around the top of the, um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance. And he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, Wet Knee Houston. Right? Wet Knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume, and, uh, they're going to get those great places. And remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got, uh, the DVD here, they've got Linda Green, they've got Stone Roses, they've got another compilation, and Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true, or have you uh, libeled no, someone it, it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he say? Oh, Come on, time. what did he say? He said, I, I climbed Everest and the, I played off it with me belly. Uh, Let's talk about it next week. We've really <laughs> run out now. Oh, you're a fool.